Hello and welcome to today's edition of the Business Spotlight interview. Uh, it's my pleasure to host Seymour Major, partner at Pascal O'Hare Solicitors here in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Seymour, delighted you could join us today. Uh, how's things? Yes, good. Thanks very much for having me. Good. You're very welcome. Look, why don't you uh, take a minute there to share with us who you are, what you do and how long you've been doing it for? Yeah, um, so as I say, my name is Seymour Major. I'm a partner in Pasco Hair Personal Injury Sisters. We are a sister firm that specializes in personal injury, as it says in the name. And I've been a partner here for about three years and I've worked as a solicitor for nearly 10 years now. So all Very good, good so far. <laughs> Excellent. So um, in, in terms of uh, your ideal customer, who would that be? Obviously, so, someone who's had an injury? Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose uh, <laughs> somebody who has had a legitimate injury that's through no fault of their own, basically, where, um, you know, there's a party to recover from, I suppose. Um, sometimes you can get injuries where they aren't anybody's fault, but there's no one to sue effectively. So for us, you need both somebody who's legitimately been injured and also um, it's through no fault of their own and there's a party there to sue as well. Okay, and uh, so, sorry for me uh, not knowing much about this, but um, what happens if somebody's been more than injured and they've actually been killed, like, uh, say it was a, a workplace accident or something like that? Do you cover that, or is that... Yeah, we, we would do. And, you know, quite sadly, actually, the claims where somebody dies aren't actually worth as much as where the person has, you know, managed to, to live, but they're severely injured. Because a lot of the, the compensation that you'll get is for the pain and suffering element of the injury. And obviously, yeah. when they die, that ends. Um, but you can still, you know, their dependents can still bring a claim um, on their behalf. But as I say, unfortunately, you know, in that type of scenario, they're not going to actually get as much compensation as if they had survived and yeah. were badly injured. Yeah. You know, not, not, not a nice area for uh, well, either, either uh, the person individually or the family. No, no, it's it, it's fatal accidents are very tough to deal with for everyone, you know, um, and it's difficult trying to explain that to people as well, you know, the fact that unfortunately the compensation isn't going to probably be as much as they would expect from a, an event like that, but yeah. it is obviously still a rewarding area as well, you know, managing to get compensation for people that, that need it and deserve it. Yeah, and have a legitimate claim for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um. Seymour, what's been your sort of biggest learning since you've been uh, a partner in a business? Um, well, yeah, there's been lots to learn, I suppose. Um, I think that probably one of the biggest things I've learned is just that you can't please everyone all the time. Um, and sometimes you have to make decisions that may, maybe aren't the most popular, but they're for the best um, of the business and for uh, for everyone's um, you know best interest. So that's probably one of the main things I've learned, just that, be I, I'm a person that likes to get on with everyone and you know to um sort of you know ha have, a, have a good time and everyone and, and that kind of thing but I think whenever you get to a leadership position in a business you do have to sometimes be ready to make somewhat unpopular decisions at times sure sure so uh when you were growing up is this something that you always wanted to do no uh <laughs> it definitely wasn't I actually wanted to be a zoo vet whenever I was wow uh, and then that progressed into wanting to be a rock star, but uh, that didn't quite pan out, unfortunately. So uh, here I am now as a lawyer <laughs> instead. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very good. And uh, do you play any instruments, Red? That was yeah, back in the rock star. I do. Yeah, no, I play. Um, I play guitar and I play uh, bass and that kind of thing, and I play keyboard as well. I play in a couple of bands, and I also play like acoustic gigs at weekends and pubs and that kind of thing as well. Fantastic. So, yeah, Fantastic. I keep myself busy. <laughs> very, ta very talented. So if uh, the folks in Belfast want to find you on a weekend, what sort, what pubs would you be in? Um, I'd be all over the place. I'd be, I'm in Haymarket quite a bit. I'm in um, Lavery sometimes. Yeah. The odd time, uh, Four Winds there as well. Yeah. Ratio Todd's, um, all over the place. Good, and, yeah, good. Get me on Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> Excellent. Very, very good, very good. So, um, <laughs> come, come, coming back to the business, because uh, if I asked you this question relating to your playing in the pubs, you'd give me completely different answers. Yeah. Uh, what's What's been the biggest issue that you've uh, overcome? 
Um, well, I suppose if I go back to near the start of my career, um, whenever I first qualified as a solicitor, well, actually before I even qualified, it was very difficult to get a training contract to, to qualify. It still is very difficult to get a training contract, but it was particularly difficult back then because it was coming off the tail end of the recession, you know, yeah. the 2007 eight recession. So um, I found quite a bit of difficulty in getting a training contract first of all, to, to qualify. And then I did get one, but what happened was the firm that I was training in went bankrupt in the middle of my apprenticeship. So then I had to look elsewhere and I was basically told, you know, if you can't find another firm, you can't finish your your training. Um, so I managed to get in somewhere else, thankfully in Belfast, and actually it worked out for the better in the end because I got a lot better training from it. But that was probably one of the, initial biggest hurdles I had to overcome um, and then upon qualification as well again there were very few jobs at that time um, and I had to go into an area when I initially qualified that I didn't really want to practice in which was conveyancing okay, um, yeah. but you had to go where the jobs were so it was then after doing that for a couple of years trying to get out of that area and get into the area that I actually wanted to do which was personal injury without any post-qualification experience so had to sideline a bit and actually end up initially taking a little bit of a, a cut in my pad to sort of move over areas but then in the long run it, it worked out much better it's paid dividends long term yeah 100 percent. very good so what have you learned about yourself during that sort of journey quite a few obstacles there having the sidestep to get to where you actually wanted to be yeah i suppose um i've just learned that you know I am mentally tough, I think, thankfully, you know, I've yeah. overcome quite a bit, um, quite a few obstacles to get to where I am. So I think, you know, looking back on it, you, you don't sort of think about it at the time, but looking back on it, I think, you know, I've managed to, to stay mentally tough, which I think has served me well. Yeah, no, great, great, great share, Seymour. I've had quite a few people on the interviews who have said resilience is one of the big things that they've had to either learn or develop within themselves yeah. as they uh, have uh, gone gone through business themselves. Yeah, it's it's basically you know you have to adapt or or that's it. You just have to keep keep on trucking basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, even when the times are seem pretty bleak. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's interesting there how you, uh, I guess, painted the picture from uh, the end of the recession in the, the, the late 2000s through to today and uh, some of the different avenues you have to try to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this is your experience, but uh, a lot of people have said on their, uh, their sort of motorway from A to B where they want to go, you take lots of different side routes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it, I think, you know, in a lot of people's heads whenever they decide they want to do something or go into an area or do a certain type of job they have in their heads and i think it's kind of fed into you from school actually that okay well you go do this you do your degree and then you get into this job and then you progress and that's it but in reality a lot of the time what happens is you have to you know take a lot of side roads as you said you actually get to where you want to be so i think people just need to to learn not to be discouraged from the fact that maybe they're not where they want to be right now, but you will get there if you, you know, keep trucking and, and you're, you'll at least get to somewhere where you're happy with in the end. Um, and it might not be where you thought you were going to be, but you'll, you'll get there. Sure. Sure. No, that's, that's, that's great. Like uh, encouraging as well for others uh, to, to hear, you know, that you've got to that partner place in a prestigious law firm here in Belfast yet uh, you didn't just step into it there is yeah. a long hard grind and sometimes some diversions that you have to follow to get to, to where you want to be yeah definitely so what's what's been the most surprising uh, aspect of being a partner in a business um I would say probably people management is uh <laughs> and, and dealing with um you know issues just at people's everyday life issues with, I suppose whenever you are um you know just doing your job when you're maybe not on a managerial level you you know what your role is you get on with your role and you you know you, you do your job and that's it 
Whereas whenever you step up a bit, then managing people is a whole other area and skill, I think. Um, and it's, I would say, probably definitely one of the most challenging aspects of of uh, running a business. Um, yeah. But it's something that I've gotten more used to as time goes on. I think as well for me, because I'm relatively young to be in a, this type of position. And um, sometimes, certainly at the start, I, I felt a bit awkward sometimes dealing with that sort of aspect of things and yeah. you know be younger than some of the people that i'd be dealing with but i sort of adopted this time has gone on now over the past few years and i learned uh learned how to sort of have the skills to deal with that area of things as well good good and did you, did you go in any sort of like additional training courses or anything to develop that people management skills or that sort of hr side of things uh no <laughs> no i didn't i just sort of you know um I picked it up as time's gone on and um, oh i mean as i say i'm a person who, who does like to get on with everyone so yeah. you know, i think that i'm approachable and that kind of thing and i think that you know it's a good starting point um sure it's you know, it's certainly challenging at times, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's very stretching. Yeah. So um, if we came back to like the, the business world and uh, looking at things like inspiration and people that you would look up to, who who inspires you in business? And it doesn't necessarily have to be within the, the legal practice, you know, uh, just in bus- business in general. Any Anybody give you inspiration? Um. Yeah, I mean, well, I suppose there's, so all the kind of big business moguls are inspiring and in, in some way you know they yeah. obviously all have their faults and people's criticisms of them as well um but you know i'd say the likes of Dana white for example from ufc would be a good one who's built a sort of billion dollar enterprise from from nothing basically um yeah. and you know um locally um i suppose you know there's uh, lots of business, local business uh, leaders who I'd sort of see on LinkedIn and that kind of thing who I would be um, fairly inspired by. But I'm probably not a typical business person in that I don't really follow uh, that kind of thing um, yeah. much, you know, I, outside. When I'm outside work, I sort of, I don't really think about it too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, any, any, I think anyone who's had a successful business is someone to be able to look up to. Sure, sure. And uh, again, because, because I'm uh, interviewing people locally here across uh, uh, the whole of Northern Ireland, mm-hmm. I very often had people who say, you know, oh, there's an uncle of mine or there's an aunt of mine or somebody within the family. Northern Ireland's very family orientated yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know so, sometimes the person who gives them the most inspiration just happens to be a sibling or you know a relative or something like that there yeah yeah no I think that's you know certainly as you say in Northern Ireland that's definitely the case a lot of people would look up to their to their nearest and dearest um so you know um for me probably I couldn't really pick out of off the the top of my head anyone close to me Here. I would say I would look up to in that regard but yeah you know as I say I think anyone who has a successful business or anyone who's who's running a business in general you know we all go through the same sort of difficulties and I think it's it's tough so fair play to anyone who does it is what I say yeah totally and uh, I'm like you you know anybody you see around your local community that's run a successful business they're sort of an inspiration to you that they've obviously had to stick in and uh work through a few things over it. nothing nothing just like falls into your lap i know that's it i think a lot of people probably don't realize how much graph goes on in the background of any type of business really um yeah. it's run so yeah fair play to everyone <laughs> yeah Good Seymour. So here we've learned that you're a very talented musician. You uh can play multiple instruments. Uh are you big into uh books and stuff like that there? Do you have a favorite book that you would recommend to any of the viewers? Um uh, I in terms of books, I'm like sort of a, a fantasy type guy, I like my, my fantasy novels and that kind of thing. So not probably not really too much for people in the business world to <laughs> to draw much influence from. Um but you know, I like um, yeah, I like Stephen King and stuff as well. I like a bit of horror. Um, but again, 
not really <laughs> not really the stuff that uh, is good for business um I was gonna say if you, me, if you... I, would, I would say like more in terms of getting inspired probably more music is more my thing you know yeah yeah um, I'm obviously big into my music so I like Very my, good. My rock music and my punk and that kind of thing I was gonna say in any particular genres so rock and punk yeah that would be my my big two um but I like a bit of everything to be fair you know and yeah for playing in the bars and stuff as well I'll obviously have to keep up with kind of the pop world too sure, uh, sure. And play all the, all the hits so um but yeah I like my rock and I like my punk I play in a punk band and I play in a rock band as well so Brilliant. yeah you, you, yeah. Mu- you must have 48 hours in the day because uh you, you've got all, all these things that you're juggling yeah I know I like I also do um MMA as well I um uh, yeah um um uh, I would do a few fights a year usually now as well wow. uh, so train six days a week and that too keep myself keep myself busy outside work all right very good very good so uh do you do you do much uh listening to podcasts and stuff you got there do you have any uh, time for that can you can you even like, squeeze that in between yeah, the office and the gym? Uh, a little bit not really um i don't really listen to too many podcasts to be honest i would listen to a bit of joe rogan sometimes um like clip, more clips on youtube yeah. i would listen to the odd like true crime podcast and that kind of thing yeah yeah um, but would be more my wife would be more into the podcast so it's sort of hear hers going on in the background but i don't really listen to them much myself i have to say okay okay so tell me this what what does the future look like for uh seymour major and uh indeed for pascal o'hare um hopefully bright hopefully good and um, thankfully it's sort of an area of business that you know doesn't isn't too badly affected by what's going on in the economy yeah um, because at the end of the day you know people are unfortunately always getting injured so sure um you know i think things are going very well at the moment thankfully you know we've been um it's it's great that we've got so many returning uh and new clients coming in um and we're yeah we're lucky to sort of have a good amount of recommendations and people coming in just through word of mouth and that kind of thing which is i think sort of the best way almost to get business you know um yeah totally Refer- referrals always the, the the sort of pinnacle of getting business is having yeah. it referred to you that's it so um yeah you know i mean i think things are are looking good um and we'll just sort of keep doing what we're doing and hopefully you know things will uh will continue the way they they're going for us excellent excellent and uh just on that point let me wish you every continued success oh, thank uh, you for, for you and the practice thank so you. um if you had some nuggets of wisdom to uh, give to uh, anybody going into business for themselves, what would they be? Um, well, sort of as I touched on earlier, I think, you know, keep your head up and keep, you know, keep pushing whenever things, even when things aren't looking so great, um, you know, and you might fail in one aspect or one area, but there's always skills you can take and lessons you can learn and bring them into something else. So, um I would say, yeah, basically just try and maintain a level of resilience. And, you know, if you've got that and you've, you know, you work hard, then you you will be successful in one area or another. Yeah. Very good. Uh, great, great points. And finally, then, just as we wrap up, if we could turn the clock back and um, sometimes looking at my head, I wish I could. Uh, <laughs> To when I had hair, what's the, what's the best advice you give to uh, an eighteen year old Seymour? Oh uh, well, there'll be a couple of things I would say. One is don't spend so much of your student loan on drink, um, yeah. and <laughs> the other one I would say would be um, just appreciate what you have, where when you're when you're getting it. Um, I think you yeah, everyone sort of when it, when they're going through life and. Um, you know things are happening and sometimes you don't take the time to stop and actually appreciate what's what's going on and what you've got so i would say there's a lot of things i look back on and you know i look back on them really fondly and i think oh i should have savored that a bit more at the time so yeah i suppose that's probably the main thing i'd say to myself brilliant great great share seymour look thanks so much for taking time out of your what seems to be chock a block full week (laughs) and no uh with all all the different things that you're juggling and yeah. uh really appreciate you sharing with uh our viewers and um again thanks once again and uh every success going forward 
and where sex very much from 